you be Thanksgiving last of November and we are looking for a buck or a doe. Which buck? Oreo. Oreo. There's a couple other bucks that live here too and they'll do also, right? <laughs> but a doe would be nice. Yesterday I got stung by a wasp. That's right. <laughs> so Taylor and Mom, Catherine, were gonna sit in a shooting house that had quite a few deer coming out in the field and for some reason that shooting house or that blind like this one was full of wasps. And I had just killed a pot of them. And Catherine killed another 20, 25. But you got stung in the leg. You kind of ruined the night. It hurt a lot, didn't it? Welcome to the club. Mm -hmm. I've been stung a lot too. But we're okay. There's no wasps in this one, just a mouse nest and dead lizards and three dead lizards. Three dead lizards. Anyway, hopefully the deer come. Hopefully we get some shooting tonight. And Tommy is about 300 yards that way. He's hunting by himself tonight. First time, first time in a tree stand by himself, but he's all strapped in and he's excited. Uh, some of the bucks we would like to see here have been seen out there, so we'll see how it goes. This is a pretty good spot. Mm -hmm.
Good job, Squeaker. My ears hurt. Yeah, mine too. Oh, Taylor. Taylor shot. I think she made a great shot. I did too. And then that second mature doe stayed up. And I'm like, I'm okay. Like, so I use this. 243. This hot pink 243. <laughs> and I think we got him. So we're gonna we're gonna review the footage. So stand by. Mine. We're not exactly sure where we hit it on Dad's, but I think she's dead. Alright, let's go. So I think she went in. through there. You do? I don't see her, Taylor. Hey, hey, stay right there. You got her? You got her? of blood. We got a beautiful sunset behind us. Taylor's first doe of the season. Our freezer's empty, so we needed it. She did the track job all by herself. And I wanted to do that. <laughs> Perfect double lung shot. And I bet she ran mostly downhill, of course. Probably 100 yards. I haven't found mine yet. We're gonna go look next, but pretty special. This is what November is all about, even in Alabama. All right, so here's where we're at. We're coming back in with Taylor's doe. Tommy is in front of us, driving the four-wheeler like a champ. Doing a great job. He drove it all the way in there. We got the doe. After we tracked Taylor's, we looked for mine. We got very little blood. Um, I mean, we didn't, we found the first couple drops 
about 100 yards in the woods. Um, looking at the shot, I feel like I hit her pretty good, but we're gonna get home and look at the, the, the big computer and see how it goes. Um, and we may have to come out in the morning and give her a second effort. It's gonna be cool tonight, probably in the 30s, uh, low 40s, so that's just fine. If the coyotes don't get to her before I do, there's a good chance we'll pick her up in the morning. But we're showing you all this because it's real, right, Taylor? Yep. Sometimes mistakes get made. My daughter made an absolutely perfect shot tonight. I did not. Now we're gonna go look at the footage and maybe it's better than I think, but from what I'm seeing, the amount of blood, which is typical of a 243, but uh, you just gotta, gotta be careful about these things. And we kind of blew up that field tonight, so I'm gonna wait in the morning, um, let it get to be about eight, nine o'clock and, and see if I can't find her. Well, good morning. It's the morning after uh, Taylor shot her doe and I shot a second doe. Uh, hoping that we doubled. We were unable to locate my deer last night. There was just not much blood. Um, and that's pretty typical with a 243. However, I say that and Taylor's deer was pouring out blood. So <clears throat> what we've done, uh, we let her lay last night. It froze, it was in the low 30s. So I know the deer is okay as long as the coyotes didn't get to it. Um, I had a, a great big bright flashlight, but when you're grid searching for blood and a body, um, a flashlight is only going to do so well. So Tommy and I are out here this morning. Um, it is about 8.30. We're going to go give this an extra look and hopefully pick this doe up and, and uh, close this story off with a solid double from last night. So, All right, well, we're standing real close to where I hit her. I'll show you the shooting house up there. Uh, she was standing right around in here. And uh, she took off this way, went down into the bottom, and I got one little spot where there's blood um, I reviewed the footage and it looks good. It's tough to tell just because of the way the camera moves at the sound of the shot. But it looks like I hit her right where I was aiming. So got the tracking dog with me today. And uh, we're going to go down in here and see if we can find her and get her on out of here and get to work. That's the last blood from last night. And I'd say we're 80 to 100 yards off the field. And I've just done a little circle in here and this is what kind of creates a problem in this timber scenario is she could go any direction there's two directions one of two i think that she went tommy's going to go down one i'm going to go down the other and we're just going to kind of do a body search and i think this drainage is probably going to be her path of travel um so if you're tracking a wounded deer you have very little blood like we do it's a good idea to follow what makes sense a mortally wounded deer is very unlikely to run uphill and they're mostly gonna take the path of least resistance downhill. So this has come to a body search. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll stumble upon some more blood on the way, but Tommy's gonna go one way, I'll go the other. Hopefully we'll find her up here. If I hit her where I think I hit her, she's not far, but the video was not 100%, so we'll see. Well, you always got to give a deer your best effort. And sometimes just the way things go, it doesn't work out. And I got two things to point out here. First of all, I think I hit her uh, in the money spot in a 12 ring. Um, but the footage is shaky because when I shot, my daughter was still holding the camera tripod arm. And unfortunately, it moved a little bit. Second of all, we're using a 243. Um, Tommy has upgraded this year to a 308, but I've had quite a bit of problems <laughs> with most of the deer the kids and I have shot with a 243 with a very minimal or almost non-existent blood trail. And frankly, uh, I'm gonna chalk today's hunt up into just an unknown or last night's hunt into the unknown. I don't know what the problem is, but I felt like I made a good shot. If I hit her forward, which you can kind of see how I would assume that may have happened by watching the slow-mo video, then she probably didn't die. Um, she went, the first blood was 100 yards or better from the, the point of impact downhill. There was no blood beyond that. We did it, we did a grid search back and forth. Tommy and I went on different ridges. We went another two, 300 yards down the gully and nothing. So um, let me know in the comments below what you think happened. Um, let me know what your experience is with rifles and blood trails. Some seem to be good. Taylor's deer that she shot with the same gun down here last night had an excellent blood trail. So. I'm just not too sure. So uh, let me know what you think happened. And um, I just want you to understand this is how deer hunting goes sometimes. I'm not gonna hide the fact that we lost a deer. I'm not proud of it, uh, but it is possible if I hit that deer farther forward than I'm assuming that she did live. But uh, this is a part of it. It's unfortunate, but uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, you gotta keep going. This isn't a reason to quit.